This is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. This is day two of Jesus' recruitment of disciples. It says the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. That's kind of the standard invitation. Jesus seeks out those who he wishes to be his disciples, and he beckons them to follow. He does the same thing to you and me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And if you recall, they've already been called by Jesus. So there's a, a networking going on. One knows another who knows another and so on. Philip finds Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Philip, based on Jesus' invitation and based on apparently what he's heard from those who've testified to Jesus, believes that Jesus is the Messiah. And so he finds Nathanael and asks, them, asks him to come and follow as well. But now we find the first resistance to Jesus recorded in this gospel. It says, Nathanael said to him, can anything good come from out of Nazareth? We don't know exactly what Nathanael is asking here. Uh, if we assume that Nathanael knows his Old Testament very well, and most of them would have, what he means is that there's no place in the prophets where it says that the Messiah will come from Nazareth. Nazareth is just a, a little jerkwater town. There's nothing special about it. It's not prophesied. And so he wonders if this can possibly be true. It, it also could be that Nathaniel just doesn't like the town, that he looks down upon it, that he has disdain for it. And so he has disdain for anybody who comes from there. So Philip says, come and see. That's what Jesus said when the first disciples asked if they could follow him. He said, come and see. Seeing is something that we're going to see throughout this gospel as a theme. There's going to be physical blindness cured later in the gospel, but it's always a metaphor for the spiritual blindness of those who will not receive the light, who continue to live in the darkness, as was mentioned in the prologue in chapter 1. Come and see. Come and have your eyes opened. That's Jesus' invitation to you and me every single day. Come and see. Now, when Jesus saw Nathanael coming, it says in verse 47, toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Well, you and I know that answer. This is the word who has been from the beginning. This is the word in flesh walking among us. Everything that the Father knows, Jesus knows. The one who created the cosmos and the stars and even Nathaniel is standing before him. Jesus answered him, I saw you. Stop there. I saw you. There's almost an implication now. You come and see me. I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Well, this is a, a sign, a small miracle for Nathaniel. And he replies, Rabbi, teacher, something that consistently people are beginning to call Jesus, an identity, one of many things that Jesus is called that sum up who he is as the word made flesh dwelling among us. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. These are messianic titles. He's gotten over what he was ever thinking about Nazareth at this point. He's gotten over wondering what good can come from there because he's now seen. A sign has been performed before him and his heart has been changed. Jesus answers, 
Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. This small little thing is not what will lead you to faith. And we're here first introduced to something throughout the gospel. Jesus constantly pulls people to move beyond seeing the signs, the miracles, as a reason to believe. Because they don't tell the whole story. We will see many great things in the Gospel of John that Jesus does, but he constantly points past them to when his hour comes, and we'll hear about that in a little bit. Jesus points beyond the signs because they don't flesh out completely, pardon the pun, exactly who this Jesus is. You will see greater things than these. And then he said to him, in a way of kind of foretelling what it is that Nathaniel and the others will see, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, this is an obvious reference to the dream story in the book of Genesis, where Jacob sees a ladder or a stairway or a, a temple mount that is arranged all the way up to the heavens, and he sees angels coming up and down on it. There's a clear message here that God is coming down. God is coming to earth. The heavens have been opened, and God has decided to be with God's people. And that that will happen upon the Son of Man, who is Jesus. And this is the first of many places that Jesus will point to his cross as the crossroads between heaven and earth. This story teaches us because it shows us once again the power of witness. Philip hears the call to follow Jesus and then he witnesses to Nathaniel and Nathaniel sees for himself and then will witness to others. We've seen how seeing in the Gospel of John is a way of talking about faith. We've seen Jesus' identity fleshed out even more. He is the Son of Man, the Son of God, the King of Israel, Rabbi. And in this first speech that Jesus gives, he talks very clearly about something that's true and been introduced in the very first chapter, that in this Jesus, in him, God comes to us. That is the miracle of the Gospel of John in many ways. Above all the signs that we will see, all the healings that will come, the powerful teachings that will happen, the real miracle will be found that God comes to us in the cross of Jesus Christ, that Jacob's dream comes true in Jesus. Heaven has come down. God has come down and loves us so much that God will dwell with us. May we pray to be good witnesses. May we pray to see and have the eyes of faith May we pray to receive this God who comes to us. Amen.